Hi folks and welcome to a video topic about Overrun in Competitive Commander. Currently we're looking at Greater Roof Behemoth and the new card Final of Devastation. A deck that is going for this game plan is always aiming at building a critical mass with creatures such as dorks so you're able to hard cast your really big expensive Greater Roof Behemoth but also looking at creatures with hate bear effect, stacks effects, that will somehow lock the game down and interact with your opponents and prevent you from losing the game. And when you reach a critical mass, let's say 10 or 12 creatures or so, when you cast and assemble the Greater Roof Behemoth and you get the ETB effect, you will give all your creatures plus 10 plus 10 and trample. And that should be able to deal 120 life to free opponents or so. However, this game plan is actually rather mediocre because of two simple reasons. The first one is that Great of Behemoth has a mana cost of 8 mana. That is a really expensive 1 card combo. Sure, it is a 1 card combo, but 8 mana is actually quite a lot. The secondary problem is that this actually requires a setup. And actually a rather tricky setup. You need to reach a critical mass of creatures to make it function. Then sure, if your opponent's life is less because you might have been attacking them already, decrease their life total and maybe you only need to reach an 80 damage to kill all of your, your opponents. So the setup could be easier achieved through that way. But still, building a high creature count isn't actually as easy as, as it sounds. But this is where Final of Devastation is coming into topic. So it's 2 green mana and X and search your library or graveyard by the way for a creature with converted mana cost X or less and put it into play. If you paid 10 or more mana into X, give all your creatures plus X plus X and haste. So that is a lot more mana for an overrun. To be honest, 12 mana overrun is rather expensive. Also, this doesn't give your creatures trample, so it's a problem. However, Compared to Great of Behemoth, Final of Devastation isn't a dead card inside your hand if we don't have the critical mass, because Final of Devastation could help us build the critical mass. For example, if you pay 3 mana into X, you could find an offense to the foremost. So that's a 5 mana, an offense to the foremost. So that's okay, it's not great, but it's not useless. But let me show you something really cool, something Greater of Behemoth can't do, that Final of Devastation will be able to do. So for example, when you cast your Greater of Behemoth, you want to use your lands as much as you can to tap for the mana to cast it. You don't want to use your dorks to cast your overrun effect Greater of Behemoth, because then your dorks are going to be tapped, and that means they can't attack. But when you use Final of Devastation and find either Village Bell Ringer or Great Oak Guardian, they will eat to be and untap all your dorks. So you build a high critical mass of mana dorks and some hate bears, you cast your Final of Devastation using your dorks, you find one of these two, you untap all your dorks, and now they're able to go to combat. I guess that I should mention Gaia's Cradle, a land that will help us reach the mana, the 12 mana we need to cast Final of Devastation, or the 8 mana to actually cast Great Hoof Behemoth. But with a Great Oak Guardian inside your library and a huge amount of dorks, it is actually getting possible to reach the critical mass and reach the mana to win the game with Final of Devastation Overrun. And we could also tutor for it with Spell Seeker that is later gonna join in in the big overrun smashing ID. However, after taking into account all the small upsides with Final of Devastation compared to Great of Behemoth, I still don't think that Final of Devastation overrun game plan plan A is a legit ID. I actually think it's rather mediocre still. There is definitely an upside with Final of Devastation being a good card inside your hand always compared to Great of Behemoth that is going to be a dead card inside your hand until you wane the game with it. But now we're starting to mention something here. The part where Final of Devastation is a card that we could use every single part of the game means that if we have a good plan A that want to have Final of Devastation inside our deck, then when our plan A fails, we could look at plan B using Final of Devastation to win the game. 
then it's becoming interesting and then I think it's legit. Final of devastation and let's say overrun should be plan B. Now I think that Nigella the Blade Blossom is a great example of a commander that could use this overrun sorcery as a plan B wing con, but could also utilize the card for her plan A. For 5 mana you could use this card to tutor and find Darevi and with the commander Nigella and Darevi you have infinite combat steps. But this is also a really nice part that if Darevi dies you could use this card to resurrect it and bring Darevi back from the graveyard into play. So but if Darevi ends up in exile we can't actually get it we could use this card to give all of our creatures plus x plus x and Nigella is a commander that is basically filling the board state with tokens so she has an easy time building the critical mass for this card to overrun all of her opponents. But this is not a video review about this card, this is a video about overrun in general and let's keep on the topic of Nigella. Here we have two other cards, we have Domri and Celios Persecution. I really like these two cards inside Nigella because they are doing something that will also synergize with an overrun I game plan, a plan B overrun. For example, Domri. I've actually been play testing Domri and I did mention Domri during another video, my video review about Planeswalker from War of the Spark. So I think that Domri is a good card for Nigella and after play testing it, I find it kind of okay. It's a, it's a bit mid-range, a bit expensive, but it's giving us a lot. It is giving us a Pit fight, we could use the minus two from Domri to make Nigella fight something and kill it. You could also make uh, Domri uh, pit fight your tokens with other pesky stuff to get rid of stuff in general. But Domri also gives all of our tokens plus one attack. And Nigella is swarming with one once, that becomes two once. And that is actually rather scary. The same thing with Celius Persecution, a really good card at killing mana dorks from our opponents and sometimes killing eh, some specific stuff. It actually has good use. For two mana to give all of your opponent's creatures minus one minus one but give all your creatures plus one plus one will turn every little token Nigella produce into a two two. So that will speed up her uh, Nigella beats kill. Still, this is not a deck tech video about Nigella. Let's look at other legendary creatures as commanders that could do this plan B overrun game plan. For example, Darevi. When you're going for Darevi, you're usually also including Stasis. Because with Darevi and a creature with Vigilance, you can break parity and go the distance and keeping Stasis alive forever. But when you're including Stasis, you might consider Garuk. Plus one, untap two lands. That means I can use one of the lands to pay for stasis and then use the other land to eventually cast creatures that you draw from every turn that is going on. And as long as these two stay alive you pretty much have a two card lock down the game. It's not a, this is not gonna win the game straight up but it's gonna make sure that you're the only one actually playing the game and that is actually rather good. Then you could use Garuk as a plan B Overrun minus three. Give all creatures you control plus three plus three and trample. Also, this is pretty much a big mana ramping card. Four mana to untap two lands is something. It is not a great card, but when you're going for this kind of combo in this kind of deck, it is functional. Let me show you guys a cool overrun tech with Yisan the Wandering Bard. On verse counter number 3 you find Fierce Empath. ETB effect search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost 6 or more. So we will pretty much have Great Hoof Behemoth in our hand. Then we pass turn. In an opponent's end step you activate Yisan and verse count number 4 we will find Champion of Ronas. And then you will take your turn. Then this is no longer affected by summoning sickness. Attack with this and everything you have, including Yis and the Wandering Bard. You will now exert this creature, eat it, and you will then put Great Youth Behemoth from your hand into play and get the ETB effect from this. And that will give you the overrun Great Youth Behemoth effect. 
But let's look at a deck that already includes both Yi Sun the Wandering Bard and Village Bell Ringer. I did mention before that with Final of Devastation and Village Bell Ringer, you could tap all your dogs to reach the 12 mana you need to get the overrun effect, find Village Bell Ringer from your deck, and untap all your dogs so they can attack again. Now, with inside the Blood Pod, Tana and Tumna, you use Yi Sun the Wandering Bard, tap it. Find uh, when you reach verse counter number three, you need to build verse counter number one, the verse counter number two for anything. Then you find village bell ringer, this will eat a bee and untap all your dorks and will untap Yi Sun. Then you activate Yi Sun once more and you find something at four. You will find Felida Guardian that will make the village bell ringer flicker. This will now ETB again and untap Yisan once more and all the dorks. So you tap Yisan and all the dorks and you find something at 5. You now find Kiki Yiki and you could either target Felada Guardian or Village Bell Ringer and you'll have infinite uh, tokens of uh, one of the two. And then you simply attack and win. But the deck Blood Pod contains a lot of different creatures, hate bears that you need for certain specific situations. So depending on the situation you're in, you could use Final the Devastation to find the thing, the specific creature that you need. But you could also use this card to find Yis and the Wandering Bard to set up your combo. Or if you already have Village Bell Ringer in play, you could use Final of the Station to find Kiki Yiki. But if none of this is actually happening, and the only thing you actually have in play is a bunch of random hate bears, and even some creatures that Tana have assembled from attacking, some saprolings, then you could use the Final of the Station with your dogs to find Village Bell Ringer and overrun. So basically, what Final of the Station is inside that deck is a plan B enabler of an overrun, a really expensive one card combo that demands a big setup. And that is why it is a plan B. But we could use the card to enable and help our plan A or make sure that we find a creature that we need to make sure that we don't lose the game to our opponents. So this is a multi-purpose functional card that is giving us a lot. I think this is a great card in general. But I actually think that the concept of overrun is a bit underrated and it's easier to achieve than you might think. I haven't mentioned Elish Known, but she's gonna shine now. She's actually a really expensive card, but she gives all your creatures plus two plus two. So she's helping you with that overrun effect. But she's actually a really stompy stacks hate bear. She gives all of your opponent's creatures minus two minus two. That is actually making her better compared to Great Hoof Behemoth because she's actually doing something. If you're not winning the game currently at the spot, you could cast her just to make sure that your opponents don't progress their board state. If you cast Great Hoof Behemoth and you don't win, this is gonna do nothing, uh, pretty much for the rest of the game. So she's definitely a semi overrun card and a semi hate effect, a really expensive card, but in a deck that is making sure that the game goes long, this is definitely a thing. And there's a lot of different cards in this format that is helping us do something like, uh, this is a board wipe, a semi weak board wipe. This is a pit fight and this is mana wrap, but all of them are also semi overrun, semi plan B. I hope I have expanded your mind and helped you with your creativity and inspired you some way. Thank you so much for watching and take care guys. I'll see you in the next video.